The Varroa destructor mite is the most damaging honeybee pest worldwide. While Australia is currently free from the pest, it is a major threat that could become established here at some stage in the future. Understanding the effects that Varroa can have on beekeepers and growers will help us to prepare for the time when it arrives. If Varroa mite does become established, we can expect 95 to 100 per cent of unmanaged colonies to be killed within three or four years. The effect of Varroa on European honeybees depends on the Varroa genotype, the subspecies of the honeybee, the presence of bee viruses, climatic and geographical zones, and the overall health of the hives. The presence of Varroa in Australia could transform beekeeping and plant production industries, affecting 1,700 commercial beekeepers and tens of thousands of backyard beekeepers. It's estimated that around 50 to 60 per cent of Australian beekeepers, mostly hobbyists and part-time commercial operators, will stop beekeeping. Larger commercial operations are more equipped to respond to Varroa, with only a small decrease in the total number of hives. Ideally, beekeepers and growers will be prepared for this event. It is possible to successfully control Varroa by using natural and synthetic chemicals, husbandry practices and fostering bees that are partially tolerant to Varroa. Commercial beekeepers will face increased costs due to the cost of buying treatments, paying for labour to visit hives for treatments and hive losses due to the treatments that for some reason don't work. It's not clear what the effect on honey production will be. How you choose to manage Varroa will depend on whether you are a hobby or commercial beekeeper. If you're a hobby beekeeper with only one colony and time and money are not an issue, then there is a large number of options to control Varroa. However, if you're a commercial beekeeper with a large number of hives, the time and money spent on each hive becomes economically important. With the majority of feral European bees gone and no longer providing a free crop pollination service, growers are likely to make greater use of commercial pollination services. This will increase crop production costs and if they do not already have a contract with a beekeeper, growers may experience shortages in the number of hives available for crop pollination. With time, market forces should increase the supply of rental hives to meet the growth in demand from horticulture industries for pollination. We would ideally have arrangements in place so that effects on beekeepers and producers of honeybee pollinated crops are minimised. So the best way to deal with or to prepare in advance of Varroa coming to Australia is to think about your pollination needs and think about how you can have them provided uh, by both protecting the wild pollinators, the, the native bees that aren't going to be affected by Varroa, and then also think about establishing relationships with beekeepers who can come and provide a professional pollination service. And if you do that before Varroa gets here, not only will you benefit in getting a better outcome in the meantime, but you'll be fully prepared for when Varroa does make it to Australia. Australia has a healthy bee population and we want to keep it that way. If you see anything unusual on your bees, call the Exotic Plant Pest Hotline on 1800 084 881. For more information about bee biosecurity, go to the Be Aware website at www.beaware.org.au.